Our first question in this problem set, number one, the magnitude of the momentum of an object. Momentum of an object. Now, I remember that it was the letter P, but I could always look it up. Uh, there it is, momentum, right here. And I can find a formula for momentum. It's right here. The momentum of the object, mass times velocity. So I can say momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Now they give me the momentum. 64 kilogram meters per second. And now if the velocity is doubled, V is equal to 2, uh, the magnitude of the momentum. Well, sometimes just, I, I know this seems simple, but I, I try not to make stupid mistakes. So I'm going to call the mass 64 kilograms and the velocity is 1 meter per second, making the momentum 64. So now it's 2, so it's 64 times 2, so it's going to be 128 kilogram meters per second. So it seems pretty straightforward. Question 2, the diagram shows two carts that were initially at rest on a horizontal frictional surface being pushed apart when a compressed spring attached to one of the carts is released. Cart A has a mass of 3 kilograms, cart B 5 kilograms. 3 kilograms, 5 kilograms. If the speed of cart A is 0.33 meters per second after the spring's release, what's the approximate speed of cart B? Well, this is a conservation of momentum. The formula is relatively straightforward. This is momentum before an uh, incident is equal to momentum after an incident. It's a recoil problem. So if I have uh, um, basically the momentum in one direction has got to be equal to momentum in the other direction. So M1 V1 is going to be equal to M2 V2. And if I'm looking for cart B's velocity, I divide both sides of the equation by M2. So let's see. I'm going to do this in my head. Uh, 3 times 0.3 is about 1. 1 divided by 5 is about 0.2. So I'm going to say it's 0.2. I'm going to see if it makes sense. The small one's going at 0.33, so the big one's got to be going less than that. So I have two options, and one of them is uh, 0.2, and the other one is 0.12. So I think my answer's right. The third problem, two cars having different weights are traveling on a level surface at different constant velocities. All right, so let me think about this. I got two different weights, so mg is different. This car is going to have a bigger m, same g. And they're traveling at a constant velocity, so they're traveling at vv. Within the same time interval, greater force will always be required to stop the car that has the greater this is a problem involving changing momentum. The car's got some momentum. And a force times time is equal to the change in momentum. So greater force will always be required to stop the car that has the greater... Oh, within the same time interval. That's an important point. So I can say that F times T is equal to my change in momentum. F times T is equal to M delta V. So a greater force will always be required if you take T out of the equation uh, to stop the car that has the greater uh, momentum. Question four on this problem set. Satellite A has a mass of 1.5 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. And it's traveling east at a velocity of 8 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. So this is my mass for A. Satellite B is traveling west at a velocity of 6 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. The satellites collide in head-on and come to rest. Well, this is just a stupid question. Satellites, we imply that these are in space. If they collided head-on, they certainly wouldn't come to rest. They'd fall to Earth. But they try to make it fancy. They couldn't keep colliding cars. Uh, so, Anyways, we're looking for a mass of this one. Well, this is a conservation of momentum again, where M1V1 equals M2V2. We're interested in mass, so divide both sides by V2. So it's going to be uh, 1.5 times 8 divided by 6. 
So 8, 19, 11, 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2. Question 5. What is the speed of a... They're giving me the mass of 1 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. They're giving me its momentum of 2 times 10 to the 4 kilogram meters per second. And they're looking for velocity. Momentum is equal to mass times velocity from the formula sheet. I'm looking for uh, velocity, so I divide by mass. So I got 2 times 10 to the 4 divided by 1. So my answer has got to be 2 something. And uh, 2 times 10 to the 4 divided by uh, 1 times 10 to the 3. So that's going to give me... I'm dividing, so I subtract my exponent. 3 minus 4. My answer has got to be C. At the circus, a 100 kilogram clown. That's, uh, that's about 225 pounds. So that's a big clown. So the mass is uh, 100 kilograms. It's fired at a velocity of 15 meters per second from a 500 kilogram cannon. So the cannon mass is 500 kilograms. What's the recoil speed? Well, this is a M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. The momentum before you shoot the cannon is zero. So after you shoot the clown, it will have momentum and the cannon will have momentum and those momentums will be equal. So I'm looking for V2. And so it's going to be M1 times V1 divided by M2. That'll be equal to V2. So 100 times 15 is 1,500 divided by um, 500 gives me 3. I'm saying my answer is 3. 7. A force of 6 newtons changes the momentum. Change in momentum is uh, 3 kilogram meters per second. How much time did the force act for? This is a impulse question. Impulse is J. It's force times time. This causes a change in momentum. FT is causing a change in momentum. So I want to know time. So divide both sides by F. So let's see. Uh, 3 kilogram meters per second divided by 6 newtons gives me about a half a second. Now this is an example of where it's important to set up the equation and then plug in with units because it would be very easy to say, oh, 6 divided by 3 is 2 and go for the answer 2. You'd be wrong, but it'd be very easy to do it if you were just doing the math in your head. Question 8. A 1.2 kilogram block and a 1.8 kilogram block are initially at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. When a compressed spring between the blocks is released, the 1.8 kilogram block moves to the right and uh, at 2 meters per second. What's the speed of the 1.2 kilogram block? All right. Well, this is uh, M1 V1 is going to be equal to M2 V2. The momentum before, which is zero, will be equal to the momentum afterwards. In order for that to be equal to zero, then that momentum in that direction has to equal that one. I got M1, I call that M2 V2, whatever. I divide by M1. And that gives me that. So it's 2 times 1.8 or 3.6 divided by 1.2. Uh, that would be 3. Question 9. The diagram shows a 4 kilogram cart moving to the right and a 6 kilogram cart moving to the left on a horizontal frictionless surface. When the two carts collide, they lock together. The magnitude of the total momentum of the two carts after the system is, well, it's going to be whatever the momentum was before the collision. So let's do that. Let's see, uh, 3 times 4 is 12 kilogram meters per second. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18 kilogram meters per second. It's going the opposite direction, so we give it an opposite sign. So 12 minus 18. My total momentum, the sum of my momentums, is 6 kilogram meters per second. And so that will have to be the correct answer. Now they said the magnitude, which means simply the number. They asked for the magnitude and direction. It would be uh, 6 kilogram meters per second towards the uh, left. The diagram shows two compressed springs between two carts initially at rest on a horizontal frictionless surface. Cart A has got a mass of 2 kilograms. Cart B has a mass of 1 kilogram. 
string holds the cards together. After the string is cut, the two cards move apart. The magnitude for which quantity is the same for both cards. Momentum. Uh, inertia is an indication of mass. That can't be true because they have different masses. Kinetic energy is a function of velocity and it's velocity squared, so that won't be the same. They will have the same momentum. The momentum before they were cut was zero. The momentum afterwards has to be equal to zero. And velocity, uh, you don't even have to know what the numbers are. Uh, if they have different kinetic energies, they'll have different velocities. If they had the same velocity, uh, well, they have different masses, so they don't necessarily have to have the same kinetic energy. Uh, a 50 uh, a gram bullet, a .05 kilogram bullet is fired from a 4 kilogram rifle that's initially at rest. Gun at rest with a bullet in it. So the mass of the bullet is 0 0.05 kilograms. Mass of the gun is 4 kilograms. If the bullet leaves the rifle with a momentum having a magnitude of 20 kilogram meters per second, what will be the momentum of the rifle's recoil? Well, this is a little bit uh, easier than it seems. Mass times velocity will equal mass times velocity. The momentum before equals the momentum after. So if the momentum of the system is zero before you pull the trigger, the momentum has to be zero afterwards. So the momentum of the bullet is 20 kilogram meters per second. The momentum of the gun has got to be negative 20 kilogram meters per second. They only ask for the magnitude of the numerical value. That would be 20 kilogram meters per second.